Let's, we got to about 15 minutes or so left. I want to try and get to some more callers, including Chris in Toronto. Hey, I was just in Toronto a couple weeks ago. Hi, Matt. Hi, Tracy. How are you guys doing? Hi, doing good. Thanks good. for calling. We're calling, no calling again. Oh. Yep, I'm calling the second time because I think I got hung up on last time. Oh, gosh. Okay. Well, this time, if you do, it'll be Tracy. Oh, Okay. Okay, that's good to know. I, I don't think that I'm, I'll get hung up on. Um, so I called last time, and I think I talked about uh, being a born-again Christian. Mm -hmm. And I think I made a comment that if you were, you wouldn't be an atheist. And I think I got hung up after that. Oh, I yeah, remember. you might have. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just dismissing people out so, of hand. Will... So I, can, I think I can clear this up kind of quickly, actually. Um, I was... People have asked me, were you ever a true Christian? And the answer is really simple. If by true Christian you mean somebody who actually has a relationship with the risen Jesus, then no, I wasn't. But I don't think anybody else is either because I don't think there's a risen, risen Jesus to have a relationship with. But if by but true... that's your personal but, opinion, I know. Right? Can I finish my sentence? Okay. But if by true Christian you mean someone who is sincerely convinced that they have a personal relationship with Jesus, then I was. And can I ask you how you were convinced? In what way you were convinced you, you had that relationship? In, in what way? Okay. Uh, so I walked down the aisle at, at around the age of five and accepted Jesus into my heart and then was active in, in church and ministry for the next you know, 18 years or so. Um, I would feel what I was told and believed was the presence of the Holy Spirit while I was playing, praying and praising and singing uh, active in the church. I was convinced that this was in fact the case in part because uh, later I discovered because the people around me had those beliefs as well. Uh, I was convinced by some really bad arguments that I had good reasons to believe but at the time I didn't realize they were bad reasons. I thought they were, this is what Tracy was talking about at the beginning, I had a fundamentally different view about what makes something a good reason to believe. And so I was sincerely mm -hmm. convinced and I was sincerely mistaken. Okay, so based on what you're telling me, it seems like it's because of what the people that were telling you and your feelings and what and et cetera that you thought you had that relationship with Christ, correct? That, well, that and I, what I was experiencing was what I understood to be a relationship with Christ, but I don't think that's the case. Okay. What were you experiencing? I would get impressions uh, when I was praying about that felt like guidance. Um, I would ask God for answers and go to the scripture and find things that made sense to the question that I was asking, and that felt like God leading me towards an answer, stuff like that. And why, 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 is, why do you not take that as guidance from God, though? Why do why I not? Why that not be the case? Yeah. Uh, because there's no evidence that any of that was actually guidance from a God, and you can open up the Bible to pretty much any page and find something that you can then interpret after the fact to be significant. And then even if you test the results, um, people who believe in a God aren't more moral, they're not more honest, they don't necessarily live any better life than anybody else. Um, and so when you try to figure out, is this me acting as if I was God, or is it actually God, how do you tell the difference? And I, I have no way of telling the difference. If there is a God, he hasn't done anything to make himself clear. And I don't understand why any God uh, that would give somebody a rough feeling that maybe this passage might be relevant to their life wouldn't just say... That's what faith is, right? That's what, what faith is. I, I, He's not... Chris. You live by faith. You don't why? live by evidence. That's what Christianity is all about, right? We understand yes. that much. Yes, and I that's think. why I reject it, because faith yeah. is not a reliable pathway to knowledge or understanding. There's I mean, that's basically... If I remember, Chris, the call, you said that you weren't raised with, with this sort of religious framework in your life, and I found that very difficult I, to believe, because you have bought into the framework of it very tidily. Um, and, and I can tell you why. Go okay. for it. Tell it's me. Because, it's because of what I've experienced. I've had an encounter with God. There is no... How do you know? Right, but, but here's the he, thing. He said, well, here's, here's what I'm asking, though. Like, for example, when you say that it's okay to have faith, which just means believing that you believe, 
That's what faith is. It's just belief, right? I mean, you're saying I believe it's not it. just belief. It's knowing. It's having. It's just a strong. It's a convinced. You're convinced, all right? Well, it's, you're believed to a high degree. <laughs> It's okay. being guided by him and hang on. I guess my hang, point hang, hang is on, you're on. saying faith not evidence. And then you start piling on what you are trying to describe as evidence. Yes. And what we're going to then you have to look at it. It's like do you believe on faith or do you believe on evidence? I never talked about evidence. I was what talking do you about think? Faith. You no, don't think you hearing were talking God's about, voice? You said you hear God's voice. That's not evidence. That's it's faith. Not? I have an experience with God. So you That's don't actually hear God's experience. voice. That's not really happening. You just believe that you hear it, but it's not really it's, hearing it? It's like I have the Holy Spirit in me, so I'm being How guided do you know? by Him. How do you know? Because I know. I, I, How? I know when He's okay, speaking to me. Okay, Chris, Chris, do you understand that because I know is not in any way an explanation? It doesn't do anything to explain anything. It doesn't help anybody understand. I could say you're wrong. You know I could say, Bible, Chris, you I know could, Chris, the Bible Chris, is full of personal Chris, testimonies. I don't. Wh well, so is alien abduction. I am full of personal testimonies, and I could sit here and say that I know that you're wrong. And when you ask how do I know that, I can just say I, I know. know, and we get nowhere. So how is that remotely a pathway to understanding or truth? You just have you. You're just hell bent on denying the truth. You just don't want to accept it. Well, no, you're not giving I mean, us any reason. I accept to, all kinds to of believe things. that what you're saying is true. I accept all kinds of things are true. By I, by your own definition, Chris, you're you're basically saying you're not going to provide reasons. You're not going to provide evidence. That you just simply are saying that you know it's true, and we should believe you. We're rejecting it. You say we're unreasonable rejecting it, and yet you give us nothing to accept it on. But every person, if you look in the Bible, the Bible is the main thing in Christianity, right? So every every person they have had, they didn't have an evidence for God. It's based on their personal experience. And personal experience. It. Every bit of evidence you've ever attained is through personal experience. Every single bit of evidence you've ever attained is through personal experience. Yes, and, and also looking at the world, the design, everything. Uh, okay, so, but you just said that it's not about personal experience, and then you acknowledge that it is. What? What happened to Saul on the road to Damascus? He had an encounter with God. How do you know that? Th that's what the Bible says. How do you what? know that it's true? Because Bible was inspired by God. How do you know the Bible was inspired by God? Well, why because do you? Of my personal experience with God, I know. Whoa! Uh, the Bible doesn't I, even say he, it's inspired by God. So why are you saying he leads it? Me, he leads me to scriptures from the Bible. There's a lot of truth in the Bible. How do you? How, how do you know that He's leading you through the scriptures? Because God speaks to me in my. Uh, okay. Through the do, Holy Spirit. Chris. Chris. Does God answer your prayers and, and give you guidance on what to do? Of course. Then pray, yes. to, then pray to your, Chris, then pray to your God right now and ask him what he wants you to say to us. And I'll, okay, but I'll, he doesn't always answer right away. I mean... Uh, I tell you what, call back after he answers. Call me back okay. as soon as God tells you what he wants you to say. Because I guarantee you, he hasn't wanted, if he exists, he hasn't wanted you to say any of the things you've said so far. How do you know that? Because you don't sound very convincing, and it's, it's rough listening to your I call. know because I know, and if that's a good enough answer for you to believe God, then clearly it should be a good enough answer for you to believe me, since you have more evidence that I exist. It, than I guess the thing exists. is, if God sent you to call the show and basically said, tell them you have no evidence, tell them you have no reason, just tell them you believe it. Did I say it. that God sent me to call the show? No, she, no, what, she, no Matt said if, if God has asked you to say any of these things, like he doesn't think, I forget how you worded it. But God did not tell him. You asked how I knew that the, if there was a God, he wouldn't have sent you to say these things. Right, and I'm explaining why. Because if God had sent you to, to, to say what you're saying, it would be a piss-poor job of explaining why anyone should believe in a God. Unless he wants to continue winning the world's longest game of hide-and-go-seek, and then everything you've said is perfect. Right. Thanks. So what Matt is saying is just ask God for some better firepower in the future. And as soon as he tells you what to say, you'll call back, and it should be incredibly convincing, shouldn't it? Well, yeah, it should be convincing enough to convince anybody. Right? Right. Cool.
So we look forward to hearing from you what God tells you he wants us to hear. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Bye-bye.